Ralph, nice to have you here. My pleasure, Barry. How have you been? I've been just great. Uh, we have a, a, a lovely group here that are so excited to meet you. You are really one of the landmark directors in animation. Uh, your films really captured quite a following. And you had the most successful independent animated film ever made with Fritz the Cat making something like $90 million for a $700,000 budget, which is uh, pretty astonishing. When you made Fritz, how did that affect your personal life? Did, did uh, you run into to, to trouble uh, because you had done some sort of oh, blasphemy to animation or something like that? That's a, that must have been very, very controversial. First was an underground cartoon book, maybe with 25,000 sales. Very, Crump was not the man he is today, and Crump's an absolute genius. Yeah. But in those days, Crump did this book called Fristic Cat that I went into the St. Mark's bookstore in St. Mark's, New York, found the book, I never saw it before, read it, and said, oh my God, this is great to animate. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was working for Steve Krantz at the time doing Rock and Robin Hood. So Steve Krantz bought the rights from Crumb, bought the rights from Crumb's wife. I don't know how they did it. Whatever, it was none of my business. And he hired me to direct and write it. So now I'm doing Fritz. And, and Warner Brothers backed the first uh, 20 minutes of it, then they saw it and threw it out. I don't know if you know that story. No. Okay. No. I go to Warner Brothers. I sell the film off a presentation that I did on Fritz. And the book... You're holding a book in your hand. They think you got a property. So I'm waving the book. They give me $250,000 to make it. And I do the big Bertha sequence in the junkyard with Bertha slapping Fritz in the face with her breasts. I wanted to show them what I was going to do. I didn't want to hide the fact that I was going to do this film this way. They looked at the film in the screening when I brought the 20 minutes in, and they canceled me and kicked me out and fired did not take on the movie. I subsequently sold the movie to the to an independent underground distributor who had just done Johnny Get Your Gun. He just had two big hits. He did oh. Badass, Badass, Sweet Ass or something. He's a very hot young distributor. He bought the movie for a million bucks or something, I forget. And we started. So we, I rebounded with Steve by having another very small independent producer uh, buy the movie. So now I've got making the movie. So I go to New York and we're making the movie Manhattan with old Paramount animators, Jim Ty is on it, uh, the greatest uh, Popeye artist, Johnny Gent, um, Nick to Fury, Al. So all these Terry tunes and uh, animators I love very much are animating the film. We're in New York and I want to do full animation or almost full animation. A feature film is no good limited. You know the difference. Limited animation, which is what television was doing, and I wanted to do full animation. But to do that, I had to reduce the cost of the ink and painting. In other words, if you do more drawings, the ink and painting becomes more expensive. You're painting more cells. So every cell in New York to paint would cost me seven or eight dollars. If I figured out if I took it overseas to Mexico, and get it done there, I can get it cheaper. So I go to Mexico. This is how I used to operate. I don't do that anymore. I'm too old. But understand, so I go to Mexico, make a deal with an animation company there. And what are they charging me for sell to ink and paint? A buck. A buck for me. Now I can do the full animation. I'm home. So I go back to New York, and I get a call from the union who said, you can't do that. You can't ink and paint out of the country. What are you crazy? I said, I told them. So I had a big union meeting. They weren't going to allow me to ink and paint. All the animators were ready to quit. I want to do full on it. It's very important for that reason alone. I'm a New Yorker. I mean, it's the first feature film in New York. I'm using all animators and assistants and the rest of the background artists from the union. That's a lot of money. I can't afford to do full animation. Mm -hmm. The quality I want if I painted here. 
So why don't you give me a break and let me finish the film here? So they had a vote on it and they voted no. So I told her, by the way, that if I can't afford to do it, I won't do it. And if you vote no, guys, I'm leaving. I had to close the studio. I wasn't going to do limited on Fritz the Cat. So I called the LA Cartoon Union. All the short studios have closed down. All the guys are out of work. Or Spence, Johnny, me and John Sperry. All these guys on California are starving because all the TV studios and the short studios are closing down and they don't have any work. You have to understand when I was doing this, animation was crumbling. Mm -hmm. Understand that animation today is a big deal. In my day, it was falling apart. The entire industry was crumbling. Okay. So I told the LA Union what my problem was. They said, well, you just bring that picture here. We'll let you paint wherever you want. Oh, wow. Well, the businessmen, they understood I was right. So I went. I painted in Mexico. We finished a picture in L.A. And because the union did that, you know how much money I poured into the L.A. union for my other films? I mean, all of the other films I made in L.A. wouldn't have been there. That Thousands of people on Lord of the Rings with you sitting there smoking marijuana. Look Look what they got, and look what I got, and look what New York got. I see the part about the union and how you manage the money and how you got it done, but the fact that there was sex in a cartoon had not happened before. That's right. Somebody must have been upset about that. Oh, that? Yeah. Oh. Oh, well. <laughs> well, well, okay. All the, all the quality guys, the pundits and the guys in New York, they were upset. I was not wishing upon a star. There I was. They thought I was the dirtiest guy that ever lived. Okay. Uh, we got thrown out of New York on Fritz because they thought I was a pornographer. That's how I ended up in California. I never would have left New York. Now, when I moved to L.A., when I just told you the L.A. story, I got to tell you this. My feelings are always getting hurt by the guys in the business, except the guys that love me um, or, or understand what I'm trying to do. Sure. I just want my freedom. Leave me alone. I just want my freedom. I want animation to have the same freedom. Okay. So I get to LA and I open up the middle of Variety. You know, Variety, the big LA paper. In the middle is a full page ad signed by all the Disney animators, LA hotshot animators that said that I should take my pornographic junk, stop destroying the image of Disney, and go home. I'm looking at this. It's somewhere. You can look at Variety and find it. Okay, that now that wasn't the guys that stayed with me. The guys that stayed with me loved what we were let me be very clear. The guys that hung in with me loved what we were doing. They wouldn't have given me like like, like yourself and Vita and you saw it yourself. The guys that thought I was hurting Disney, which I wasn't, because I had an R rating, he had the PG. What are you talking about here? I just want to do what I want to do. The guys that thought I was hurting Disney or the industry or the image of cartooning for kids, well. They're still around today, but so am I. <laughs> they well, get very angry that I'm still taking shots at them. Fritz was a smash. Huge. Oh, that's, you think I got my, that's where I got my energy of the films. Now, Fritz, because of different people who are distributing and hiding the money, by the way, I don't get this money. I, I'm out of it because I just was hired as a director and kicked out after. So, Fritz has made between ninety and two hundred and fifty million dollars, and it's still making money. So is Coonskin making money. So is Traffic making money. So is American Pop and Cool. I'm saying, forty years later, my films are still making money, still being shown worldwide, and all the quality films the guys are still crying about are gone. They're non-existent. Everyone's trying to do Disney and falls on their face, and here's a guy. So I am very happy. Don't get me wrong. Uh, yeah, it was very difficult. It was hard. There were hurt feelings. Uh, but I always got supported by the guys that cared for me, which was my studio. In other words, if they didn't like what they were doing, I would pack it in. In other words, the guys that stuck with me, I loved very much. They were great animators, great background artists, great people in general, except for the music you played on Fish. Um <laughs> If anyone wants to ask me a question, they could jump right in. Could you get Fritz and Traffic made today? Yes, absolutely, if you want to. In other words, you have got to make it 
uh, when I got first in traffic made, nobody wanted it. Disney was king. Of, that's all I was trying to express. I was an outsider. So I cut the price down. I did this and that. All the things I told you that I learned in Brooklyn and at Terry Tunes, the worst studio in the world that's really the best. But most important, I wanted to make it. In other words, every artist has a choice. What do you want to make? What is it you really want to make? Uh, if I was around today, I would put four or five guys together. At work at night, start making the picture. We'd all own a piece of the picture. In other words, I had a passion for doing what an artist should do or making a, a dangerous decision. I made the dangerous decision. But I don't know when I'd ever get the chance again. In other words, you never know when the chance comes up. Could I get it made today? Maybe. But if you don't decide you want to make it, how would you make it? You know, it's your idea or it's not your idea. You decide whether you're going to do something or not, whether it's impossible or not. If you don't make that decision, it's never going to happen. If you make the decision to do something, it may still may not happen. But unless you make a decision, nothing's going to happen. Can you sell it? I have no idea. But I think the game is right for the same sort of insanity because the amount of money they spend on films today. Is, I kept my budgets low, not that they would have paid me more, but A, it was worth a chance for them. I knew that. If I keep my budgets low, they're not losing that much. And why not? I know they'd never come over to the studio, but they can't stand the animation. They only want to take live action actresses out to lunch, and I don't blame them. And so I got away with a lot because, A, they never saw what I was doing, and I took advantage of that. Why would I do a picture for $700,000 that every Disney freak, every guy in the world said, well, there's no quality there at $700,000. You can't do it. You can't do an animated feature without quality. Disney was selling quality as a marketing tool to everyone else. Um, I, for coming from Terry Tunes, said it's not the quality of the film, it's the idea. If you could put a film together with a bunch of guys that you really believe in, it's the idea. You'd like it to be slick, but that's not the only answer. Slickness isn't the answer. And I find that true today. In other words, finish the film. Put your energy into it. So many ideas came up to me to the making of the film between live action and animation. I also had something to go up again. And let's understand this. The abstract artist, I just don't love abstract art. I love everything. These abstract artists had something to go up against. And that was realism. I had something to go up against. And that was Disney. In other words, I don't just like Disney. But I knew that he wasn't the only answer. I was sure of that. And that's all I was trying to say. I exploited that also. Being anti-Disney was so unusual to everybody, they fainted. So, you know, they, it helped me along in business. It was a business move. I wasn't interested. I didn't start something because I wanted to merchandise it. Now, I am not putting merchandising down. If you want to make a billion dollars, fine. I am not against any of that. But I didn't start there. So every decision you make, I mean, who could do the films I did if you thought about merchandising? I mean, you're not going to sell a Michael doll or an Angie doll. So now I got very much respect for Walt Disney. I do not dislike the man. But he's not, he wasn't the only answer. I mean, the point is you can't keep loving this guy forever and do just Disney. I mean, if you did anything else but Disney, the critics hated you. All the guys who wrote about animation hated you. I'm hated to this day by the same guys I grew up with. Thank God they seem to be passing away now. But the, you have, you, <laughs> I'm outliving them too. You have, uh, you have all these guys. I not only fought uh, the studios and the public to get what I wanted made, I had to fight my own animators. My wife, Elizabeth, says if I ever sell out, she'll shoot me. I have a wonderful wife. I'm dead serious. She did for ever so. She's so much behind the stuff I did. I can't. I don't know where I'd be without her. In other words, uh, whenever I walk home, ready to quit, ready to throw in the towel because of lawsuits and stuff, uh, she she would be behind me. So I know that now. I didn't know that then. Am I clear? 
Could you let me go to sleep now? <laughs> Sorry. Ralph, you were awesome. Thank you so much Anytime. for coming here. Thanks a lot, Ralph. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.